Hi, and welcome to the show. Subscribe at kevinmd.com slash podcast. Get CME for this episode by clicking on the CME link in the show notes. Today, we welcome Harry Severance. He's an emergency physician. His Kevin MD article is titled, De-Escalating Violence in Healthcare Workplaces, a Critical Problem Facing the Nation's Healthcare System. Harry, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. So we'll get into your article in a little bit. First off, briefly share your story and journey to where you are today. As you noted, I'm an emergency physician, residency trained, been doing this since I completed residency training in, wow, 1986. Actually, I did, I was asked by my institution to complete an additional year and I was simultaneously completed training in emergency medicine and internal medicine, the first one at that institution to do so. Since then, like I said, I've been an emergency physician in a variety of venues. Most of the time, academic type emergency centers with residency training programs. But more recently, I've migrated more into an interest in all of the sequela and disturbances that are going on in the healthcare workplaces, not just emergency medicine, but across the hospital as a whole and have been doing some presenting and writing on that, which has caused me to come to the attention of various people who have reached out to me and said, you know, heard your lecture. Can you please help me? I don't think I can do this job anymore. Can you give me some guidance? So I've kind of migrated into that as a kind of a service that I provide. And through our medical societies, that's what caused me to be in Congress the first week in May, talking to many of the staffs of some of our congressmen and senators about this issue of violence in the workplace. So let's jump right into that. Your Kevin MD article is titled, The Escalating Violence in Healthcare Workplaces, A Critical Problem Facing the Nation's Healthcare System. Now tell us some context. Tell us how your article came together. Well, again, I was asked by our state medical society to, and our society, the Tennessee College of Emergency Physicians, both, to be prepared to present this on our week on Capitol Hill to some of the staffs. We, as you probably are aware, periodically groups of physicians, nurses, other helper, will go through the offices of the congressmen and senators and talk to their staffs about issues that you know, we feel they need to hear more about. And since this is a topic that was already been of interest, they asked me to go gather data and be prepared to give them some fairly succinct, but very hard bullet points on the numbers that we're seeing. And that's how this came together. To jump up a little bit, what caused me to write the article was when I presented to Congress, they seem to be sort of kind of aware of this, but I'll have to say in many cases, I sensed this was not a burning issue with them. And that was on the first Tuesday in May. And then if you remember the next day on Wednesday, there was that fatal shooting in a clinic in downtown Atlanta. And that kind of caused me to say, I'm going to take this data and see if I can submit it and get it published. And that's how the article came to be. So tell us about the situation as it relates to healthcare workplace violence. What are some numbers? How bad is the situation? The biggest number, the biggest bullet point that I found, and the information is out there, anybody can look for it, is that we have the American College of Medical Specialties. We have our own federal government. We have a bunch of private companies that you look at this data, all of them are saying exactly the same thing. The numbers show that unquestionably the healthcare workplace, secondary to assaults and violence, it's the most unsafe workplace of any, bar none, in this whole country. It's more unsafe than the police department. It's more unsafe than the military. It's more unsafe than heavy industry. And the other thing they go on to point out is that we're not seeing all the numbers. Hospitals tend to be very reticent about talking about violence in their workplace. They believe it discourages what well, you, you don't want to walk into an office where you think somebody might beat you up. 
So they don't want this data many times out there. So what we're seeing is a tip of an iceberg. We're seeing the assaults with deadly weapons, those attacks that are by law required to be reported. But many authorities say we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg. But with that, we have by numbers 75% of all workplace assaults, three quarters, occur in healthcare. You have a over 50% chance, if you're a healthcare worker, to at some time in your career be physically assaulted. That means hit with a fist, hit with an object, stabbed, shot. You might die just because you showed up for work. Those are the compelling numbers. So tell us some stories that you've heard during your research that really kind of bring those numbers to life and really makes those numbers resonate. As I said, I, some of this I get from my individual interactions with people calling me saying, you know, I just don't think I can do this anymore. What are my options? I've not had anybody yet tell me that they themselves have been stabbed or shot. I've had several people tell me they've been pushed, kicked, you know, various types of, I would guess, secondary to gunshots and stabs, call that minor assault. That may not, you know, be the right. But anyway, like I said, I've not had any people tell me that they've been stabbed or shot, or I've had a couple tell me that the reason they called is one of their colleagues or one person witnessed a major assault assault down the hall and ran towards it and got involved. But what I have heard over the past year is for the first time, I've had people reaching out to me saying, you know, I'd like to explore alternatives. Mm. And what I try to do first is drill down and say, what are the root causes for your dissatisfaction? And like I said, over the past year, for the first time, I'm hearing that the people calling in are telling me their families, their spouse, their parents, maybe their children, some loved ones or close friends are now asking them to, can't you please get another job, a job that's safer? And that has started to resonate with me that people are now recognizing or their families are recognizing we're afraid for you to go to work. And that's a sad state of affairs. And this is across the healthcare spectrum, right? It's not just physicians. No, this is physicians. Nurses are in the numbers. They're assaulted more frequently than physicians. They're more readily available. They may spend more time with the patients and the families, but they suffer the majority of the assaults. Now, during your research and hearing these stories, what do you think are the reasons behind the increased number of healthcare assaults? It's multifactorial. Patients are more dissatisfied. During the COVID pandemic, there was this politicization you know, and that's multifactorial, but, you know, in social media, physicians and sometimes nurses were demonized because of various, we have an agenda, we want a certain medication, you're refusing that medication, and somehow it became all right. Maybe this exploded during COVID, but, but somehow it became all right to physically assault people if you're not getting what you want. So that was one crux of it. Healthcare is becoming more and more difficult to navigate. I mean, patients are frustrated. They, you know, they have a medical problem. Nobody seems able to answer you know, how to fix what's wrong and can't even direct them as to where to go next with the, the whole house of medicine becoming more and more fractionated. And like I said, there's a lot of just frustration among patients involving distrust of physicians and other healthcare providers and the institutions themselves. And sometimes this comes out as, you know, people have a bad moment and go physical. I think that's probably one of the biggest cruxes of this. One of the things that you mentioned earlier were that hospitals were reticent to talk about these numbers and publicize these healthcare assaults. I'd like you to talk more about that. What have you exactly seen and heard regarding that? Again, I'm not at the, at the hospital at which I work right now. And as an aside, I'll tell you, based on the stories that 
people tell me about their work situations, I go to work thankful every day because, you know, every hospital has some problems, but I'm sitting there going, I'm not seeing anything near like the stories that I'm hearing from the people that reach out to me. So again, I can't give you any hands-on personal experience with that, but I'm being told both by the people that talk to me and by agencies that I talk to that for a variety of reasons, hospitals would prefer, and I've read many articles that support this, they would, for a variety of reasons, would prefer that episodes like this violence occurring in the halls of their hospital not be reported. And the main reason is they see that as discouraging patients from coming. And so that is my understanding on the main reason they would simply prefer this not to be reported. As I said, some of the people that I've talked to, and I've not talked to anybody yet who's been themselves shot or stabbed. I have talked to people who I said have been pushed around, you know, maybe knocked down, maybe kicked. And several of them have told me that you know, uh, someone in the hospital, a uh, senior administrative sat down with them and either subtly or in, in a couple of cases, maybe blatantly said, can we keep this quiet? This is not good for the reputation of the hospital. What do we need to do to make this go away? And so they've told me that themselves. I've had about two, three people maybe tell me that that was their interaction with the hospital after the event. We're talking to Harry Severance. He's an emergency physician. His Kevin MD article is titled "Deescalating Violence in Healthcare Workplaces: A Critical Problem Facing the Nation's Healthcare System." Harry, tell us the path forward. What are some potential solutions to stem the frequency of healthcare workplace violence? Again, the answer is multifactorial. I think hospitals have to recognize and accept the fact that these events are occurring and start to do things to try to prevent this. You know, many hospitals, the expense and the kind of almost a discouragement for, you know, metal detectors at the doors of the hospital and various types of, again, hospitals see this as a discouragement. You know, you don't, I don't, none of us enjoy going through TSA on the way to get on the plane. We see it as just a necessary thing that has to be done. But I think hospitals have to step up and protect their staffs. I would also like to see one thing I learned when I was in the halls of Congress. I would mentioned a little bit earlier that I got the sense that this was not a burning issue. And I'm thinking these numbers are some of the worst I've ever seen. Why isn't this on your plate? Because there are bills in front of Congress. They've been stalled for the past two or three years on various laws about workplace violence. But what I'm hearing subtly from the staffs of these senators and congressmen, that they don't get a lot of calls, letters, communications from the public as a whole saying something needs to be done about this. And, you know, as we know, one thing that drives our government, our Congress, is constituents. Mm -hmm senators, representatives, they keep numbers. If they get something saying 90% of our constituents want you to vote this way, they pretty much do that. But what they're telling me is not a whole lot of citizens are calling in seeing this as a problem. And I suspect, one, we don't see, like I said, only the major, the gunshot wounds, the stab wounds ever make it in the news. I think in my article, I pointed out airplanes, you know, people have got their little phones up there. Any assault on an airplane, it, it makes it to the news maybe before the plane lands. So in many cases, the public's not aware. Part of that are HIPAA rules. You know, you're not allowed to film patient interactions. But the other thing I think is that healthcare is something that people don't want to have to think about. Yeah. Being sick is not something you want for yourself. And so healthcare is that thing. I want to know somewhere in the back, of, you know, I want healthcare to be guaranteed. I want to know if God forbid I'm really sick, that somebody will take care of me and I get the best care I can get. But I don't really want to talk about it. I don't want to think about it. And I think the public 
my own opinion, kind of shies away from this information in, until and unless they become a patient themselves or have a friend or colleague that suffers of violence. And the congressional staffs tell me that the people they hear from on these issues are the people you would expect, doctors, nurses, patients that have suffered harm, but they're not hearing a groundswell. They're not getting 80% of our constituents want you to do something about violence in the workplace. So it's not, again, as I said, the number one burning issue on their plate. And that's why I think these bills are stalled in Congress. And my final question, Harry, tell us some of your take-home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience. I would encourage like people in general to look at these numbers. 75% of all assaults occur in the healthcare workplace and reach out and talk to people, talk to the hospital, talk to your congressman, say, you know, this needs to be fixed. Why would I ask the general public to do this other than just protecting our healthcare providers is this is causing a further reduction in doctors and nurses in our healthcare workplace. As I pointed out in the article, four to 5 million Healthcare workers have left healthcare in the past two years. I myself, as I told you earlier, I'm getting calls and interactions from people saying, my spouse wants me to get a safer job. So people are exiting healthcare, doctors and nurses are leaving because of their fear of showing up to work and not coming home alive. That's causing hospitals to shut down. We have 630 some hospitals in this nation right now that are at, they didn't pass their stress test. They are at extreme risk of closing, mainly in rural areas, but that is expanding. So if we can't solve the violence crisis in the healthcare workplace, that is going to further deny access to all patients. You know, God forbid you need to go with a critical problem to the Mm -hmm. emergency department in the hospital. But if and when you do, you want to know it's there and can serve you. And if we can't address this issue on your hour of need, that hospital may no longer be there. Harry, thank you so much for sharing your time and insight. And thanks again for being on the show. You're welcome. Glad Glad to be of assistance.